Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I'm going to review for you this little guy right here. This is the Manta Watch Sky Quest. Um, first off, though, I want to thank Manta, and in the name of full disclosure, let you know that this was provided directly to me as a, um, a review sample. I'll be sending it back to him and whatnot, so there's no freebie here. But um, they sent it directly to me. I told them, as always, that I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. It might be a gem, it might be junk. They still sent it along, so uh, thanks for that, Manta, but keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that this is a review sample piece, so it's probably the best quality-controlled Manta ever, as well as the fact that um, it's actually pre-production, so uh, we're missing the, uh, the 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 writing on the back of the case here, as well as their uh, the rotor will be a Monta style one. Check out the Triumph video to see roughly what that's probably going to look like. So there you go. Next thing, size comparison here. This is actually a reasonably sized watch compared to the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean, which is not a reasonably sized watch right here. Um, this is actually a pretty nice choice. Uh, as you can see here, thickness wise, this is way thinner than the Planet Ocean, which is nice, but that doesn't really take much. Um, most things are way thinner than the planet ocean. Um, here it is against the Breitling Aerospace, another GMT sort of thing. Well, this one's a little bit more quartz, uh, actually substantially more quartz. So there you go. Um, and then let's do a couple of quick measurements for you real quick. Here's my little calipers here. We're coming in about 41 millimeters um, across the bezel here. Lug to lug distance is a very respectable 49 millimeters, which is good for people with smaller wrists. The uh, the, the lug width here is coming in at 20 millimeters, uh, so you can use an aftermarket strap, that kind of thing. And here we go. Uh, it's 12 millimeters overall thickness there. So there you go. Um, next thing about this guy is that uh, Monta Watch. Who the heck is Monta Watch? You know, a couple of folks I gather out of uh, uh, St. Louis. Lewis, actually, here in the U.S. Their watch is a Swiss made, but Swiss made doesn't mean very much in the, the, the world. Um, I'm not casting doubt on them. I'm saying I'm casting doubt on the entire Swiss industry. Uh, but anyways, nevertheless, it's a Swiss made watch, but they're, they're, they're working out of uh, out of the U.S. here. And um, I previously reviewed the Triumph. They're a smaller micro brand um, affiliated with the folks who make the Everest rubber straps, by the way. But um, anyways, they're, they're doing really nice work, and so I was very interested to check this guy out. Then finally, a quick note. A lot of people are going to already be thinking, well, Nick, there's the second hand here, the minute hand, the hour hand. What's this thing over here? That's a GMT hand. The Greenwich Mean Time. Basically, it allows you to have a different or a different time zone on there. So let's go ahead and talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this watch. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So, on the good side, um, actually, the first thing that is on the good side is that GMT hand here. Um, you can see here that it's got that extra hand. And what that actually allows you to do is to keep track of a second time. This middle hand here, the, the red one, only goes around the dial once every 24 hours. And so, by looking at this guy, if I have this set to a different time zone than my local hand, I can tell at any given moment exactly what time it is someplace else. So this is a 17 millimeter. Uh, 17 millimeter guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, this is, it is currently 1700 hours, five o'clock over there in the San Diego, where my second time zone is currently set. And you can see here it is um, actually uh, closer to the eight o'clock, eight. 10 or so, um, here in the Eastern Time Zone, where I am filming. This is my last uh, Eastern Time Zone film video, by the way. But uh, nevertheless, that's uh, th th that's kind of cool. Um, but more importantly, this actually has a rotating external GMT bezel, which means this is keeping track of more than one, uh, more than two time zones, because you've got the local time on the, 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 the hour hand there, you have one GMT time here. Then I've actually got it set at the moment so that uh, when the bezel is in this position, this uh, the, the outer bezel is showing me the GMT. So here it's currently 1 o'clock at Greenwich Mean Time, AM. And so I can see at a very, you know, at a quick glance what time it is here, what time it is in San Diego, and what time it is at GMT time uh, very, very readily. And that's honestly a great thing. It gives you the opportunity, especially if you're a world traveler or if you work with people all around the world. For instance, if your company has a division in, in say, India, something like that. It's very easy to keep this set properly, so you can always tell, okay, those jackasses are going to be checking their emails in three hours. We need to fix this before then. That kind of an affair. So that's what the GMT is for, and the fact that you've got all of this is, uh, and you've got that option to set as many time zones, well, three different time zones, well, it's just great. Um, I think that's really excellent. So um, that's the first part of the good, is that it is a GMT watch, and that's a really useful complication for travel. Next thing, um, this is using the same case and basic design as for the Manta Ocean King. I haven't had an Ocean King on the channel yet. That's just because they haven't delivered mine yet. Um, I pre-ordered it. 
But the Ocean King um, is a dive watch sort of thing, and it's actually substantially similar to this. I gather that it's just basically this without the, uh, the, the the hand there. And honestly, I think that's a great thing. I very much appreciate the fact that they're not trying to do weird things to differentiate the Ocean King and the uh, the, the, the Sky Quest here. By the way, I'm probably going to call this the Air King at some point in time. That's uh, that's the Rolex name for uh, the, the GMT watch. But nevertheless, uh, sorry about that. But no, no, I like the fact, though, that the real differentiator here is the bezel, which is a GMT bezel here in the GMT hand, but aside from that, they're mostly the same. And that gives you a really good option. Like, if you want a GMT, you can get this guy with a GMT. If you don't, you, you don't. Case closed. And they're not doing silly things like, okay, for instance, this guy is still 304 meters worth of water resistant. So it's not the case that they made the uh, water resist worse, so they'll sell you both a GMT and a diver. No. That's great. Um, And so I appreciate very much that you've got that choice of GMT or not in a watch that is substantially similar. So that's good. Next thing, they actually offer a surprising number of choices on their website there. If you, you check it out, so this is their gilt dial version. So you've got the uh, ceramic bezel out here. You've got a gilt dial. Well, that just means that it's, you know, got gold on there, not that you feel really bad about it. Although, hey, maybe you feel really bad about it, uh, depending on your, your worldview. But anyways, regardless, um, you've got the choice of the uh, black dial with silver indices, black dial with gilt indices. You've also got a choice of a blue dial and then the, with a stainless bezel or a ceramic bezel. And you've also got the Manta blue option, which is sort of a, a, a bluish tealy kind of thing. That's what I ordered my Ocean King in, so hopefully it looks really great. You've also got the option to order this guy on leather or uh, rubber which is a beautiful thing. I like the fact that you can get this guy in a nice quality rubber strap, and I've seen their rubber straps for the Triumph review, and they're, they're, they're great. They're high quality, so that's good. Next thing, um, this guy comes with an awesome bracelet. I love this bracelet very much. One of the nice details is that you can see every one of these links has nice chamfered edges right around, the, and so it feels super soft, and it just, it, it's just, it's a beautiful freaking bracelet. I love this bracelet. It feels great on the wrist. It wears wonderfully. It hasn't pinched a single hair. It really wears way above its pay grade, and so that's, that's very nice. I mean, actually, the clasp is quite good on it, too. You've got here a nice little clasp where it pops, you know, this part pops down into there, Seals shut securely, and in addition to that, you've got yourself a very nice little, uh, a very nice little overclasp here. So this is very hard to get off the wrist if you don't want it to be, but very easy to get off the wrist when you want it to be. It's just, it's great, and so I very much appreciate the fact that they've, uh, they've really done a great job on the bracelet and the clasp overall. Next thing, this is a 304 meter worth of water resistant sort of watch. I know what you're thinking, but Nick, why 304 meters? Why not just 300? Well, the thing is, Monte has your back because have you ever been diving uh, at or near the limits of human endurance at 300 meters, and then you drop your watch onto a jellyfish four meters below, and you're like, oh, man, because on any other watch, right there, it would hit the 300, just like pop, crack it half, your watch is dead. But on this guy, you have those extra four meters, so you can swim down there past the limits of human endurance and pick up the watch. Look, I, I digress, but the fact that it's got 300 meters worth of water resistance, whether there's that other four or not there, is great, because it means that you don't have to think about water when you're wearing this guy. It's just, it's good to go no matter the water situation. And so I love very much that. Next thing, um, this is, uh, it got some steps above the, the Triumph that I looked at previously. And the biggest one of those is that every one of these indices is applied. It's a separate piece of metal here. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see each one of those indices is its own little metallic beast placed onto the dial here. That is absolutely a beautiful thing. Big, big fan of that. Um, and so that's good. And frankly, it just feels like a nicer unit than the Triumph did overall. Not that the Triumph was any bad, but this just feels better. Next thing, the movement on this guy is pretty great. I'll just flip it over here so you can see said movement. Yeah, check that out. That's some quality movement right there. This is a Salita SW330 movement. Um, Salita is a company that makes uh, movements that kind of compete with ETA, which is owned by Swatch Group, and they, they, they're really really picking up slack now that ETA has stopped selling to other people because of anti-competitive behavior. Hey, whatever, big deal. Um, but uh, the nice part about this being an off-the-shelf sort of movement is that you can very easily get parts. Um, it's very easily repaired by your local watchmaker, likely. Um, and it has lots of good features. For instance, it's got a date. Uh, here, I'll zoom back out. It's got a date complete with a quick set function. So if you pull out to the very first crown position here, um, I can change the date just by scrolling down. Uh, and I can change the time by, uh, I'm sorry, I can change the GMT hands position by popping it forward one. And so now I'm changing the GMT hand hourly. There you go. Beautiful freaking thing. Um, and so that's absolutely a beautiful thing. And you've got, uh, and it's also a hacking movement, by the way. So if I pull the, 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 all the way out here. 
and see the second hand stops, which allows you to set the second hand precisely at the same time that you set your minute and your hour. Absolutely great. And so, um, to me, that, that that's really excellent. And finally, on the, uh, well, not finally on the good side, but on the good side for the movement, uh, this is a movement that can absolutely keep time well. Um, if you regulate it well, it's absolutely solid. In fact, this guy is regulated to uh, uh, five, uh, this one exactly is at about 4.5 seconds per day on the wrist across the five days I was wearing it. Um, and in fact, in a couple of different uh, positions, you know, in one position it was plus six, in one position it was plus two, but it, it averaged out to about 4.5 pretty consistently consistently. But the thing is, one of the things I love most about Monte is that they guarantee an accuracy. They tell you for sure that your watch will be plus or minus five seconds a day. That's not bad um, at all. And I love the fact that they're willing to give you that accuracy guarantee when a lot of brands simply aren't. It's like, oh, plus 20, minus 20, whatever, we don't care. But they're willing to at least go there. And so that's, that's really, really good. Next thing, um, this guy has really nice loom. I'm going to charge this off screen with an absolutely absurd flashlight here. And uh, there we go. Eh, I can go a little more absurd than that. There we go. Beautiful. And what we can see here is that every damn one of these indices is beautifully loomed, including the one above the date. The hands are beautifully loomed. The pip and the bezel is beautifully loomed. This is really well loomed. And in the middle of the night, you are absolutely freaking good to go in terms of loom all night long. Wearing this guy at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 6 a.m., look down at your watch and you know exactly what time it is. That's helped by the fact that the hour hand is very different than the minute hand. It's just so damn legible overnight. It's frankly so damn legible during the day, which I also appreciate, by the way. But this is just really, really nice overnight. I, I appreciate that loom very much. I'm a loom snob, and this absolutely satisfies. So that's good. Next thing, the size on this is so good. And what I mean by that is that the size on this is normal. It's reasonable, unlike a lot of what other companies are making these days. The 40 millimeter watch of 41 millimeters is now like, oh, wow, that's pretty petite. When in reality, that's the size most, anyways, I digress. But it is a very comfortable size. It is a very comfortable weight. Size for my wrist here, it's coming in at, let's see here. And on the bracelet and everything, this is coming in at 5.11 ounces, um, as opposed to the Planet Ocean, which is going to come in at a shocking 6.93. Um, this is a very reasonable watch on the wrist. Um, and the fact that it's also very thin, it slides under shirt cuffs, under jackets, just beautifully. I'm, I'm a big, big fan of that. Um, and then finally, on the good side, this is a really solid value. Yeah, 1700 bucks is a lot of money. But look, they are giving you a lot for it. Um, the, the finishing is incredible. The movement is good. They're regulating it well. I, I'm a big fan of the value on this guy. And so, um, to me at least, uh, the, the fact that it's 1700 bucks, yeah, it's a bunch of money. But it's a really good value compared to what every other Swiss guy's charging for that. Uh, so anyways, let's, uh, that's the good, uh, is that it is a very good value considering the finishing. It's got a, a great size. It's very legible with great loom, guaranteed accuracy, a good movement. Um, some serious improvements above the Triumph. It is 304 meters of water resist for that extra four meters of uh, endurance there. Um, an awesome bracelet. Uh, great choices. Same case in basic design as the Ocean King. And you have a GMT function with up to three time zones given that best. To me, though, what's great about this guy is that the, the, the finishing on this is really top shelf. I mean, seriously, if we take a look at it here, the, the, the clasp on this guy is great because uh, you've got this nice contrast here. I'll pop everything together between the brushed and then the polished on the class PS, Sorry, guys, I've been actually handling and wearing this. Um, but you can see here there's a beautiful polish on that class there, and this has got some wear from other reviewers. Um, you have polished, not only do you have chamfers on every one of the bracelet links, but those chamfers are individually polished, which looks really, really nice. The, the bracelet itself is beautifully finished. You have absolutely, uh, the, the, the hands on this guy are great, because not only are they polished, but they're bent. Do. So you have a nice, that you can see here, uh, hopefully as I do this, that the individual sword hands are bent in, uh, kind of bent down the middle, which means that no matter what the angle is, one of the sides is probably reflecting something, which again helps that legibility in darker conditions. Um, they, they, they're, they're beautifully polished. You've got a sapphire case back. All of the indices are applied and there's nice polishing on all of them on the sides as well as on the top. The, the, the corners of this guy are all polished. The sides of it are all polished. I mean, guys, this is 
is just beautiful. And honestly, fit and finish wise, this is uh, along the lines of Tudor, frankly, a little bit better than some of the Tudors I've seen out there, uh, or along the lines of like Longines or IWC, something in that. And it's way above like some of the competition in this price range, like Tag, Orison, Seiko Citizen. They, they, these guys are really doing a great, great job on fit and finish. And, you know, this is really, really good. So the fact that this is finished like uh, watches that are much more expensive than it, that, that, that's great. This gives true luxury watch sort of finishing at a price that I think a lot of people can probably save up to afford. Um, so that's what's great to me is that this finishing is really good for the price. On the bad side, um, first off, one of the most common complaints I got about this guy from people on, you know, Instagram and otherwise is the GMT hand has this little crook in it. Look, is it the most beautiful thing ever? Maybe not, no, but what it allows are these beautiful indices here that, that are up and that are just so full of loom, you, it makes you want to cry. And so, honestly, I don't care. Um, I Yeah, might, might have been a little tiny bit prettier without that bend, but most of the time you look down at it, you don't even notice it. It's only noticeable from some angles and even then like i said it's to clear the damned indices and the indices are incredible so i don't see a problem there not a problem to me at least next thing um this is not an anti-magnetic watch they don't have any like the special hairspring materials i know that's that's a higher end kind of thing but do keep that in mind if you're uh, somebody who's constantly around strong magnets this may uh have some troubles there next thing there are a couple of areas for improvement although for the price i'm not really complaining i'm just going to mention them here this doesn't have a strong anti-reflective coating so for instance on this bright there is a very strong anti-reflective coating. As you can see here, the light is much more subdued, whereas if I have this guy in the same position, yeah, that light's a lot stronger. Not a big deal. Um, I'd love to see an applied logo rather than the paint, although they do have the logo sort of uh, etched in over on this side. Um, the flat black on the dial is a little bit uninteresting, I'll be honest. There are ways to do flat black that are prettier, but it's fine. The movement on the back is very plain, but you know what? Whatever, not a big deal. And it's much prettier when you've got the Manta thing in the back there. And, uh, you know, I, I gotta say, uh, th th there are definitely a couple of little places where you can see, yeah, you're not paying all that much money. But the thing is, you're not paying all that much money. And some of those issues are issues on even more expensive watches. I don't think the Rolex freaking Explorer has AR, so whatever. Not a big deal. Next thing, the class on this guy is very wide. What I mean by that is that this portion here is surprisingly large. If we put this up next to the Omega Planet Ocean, you can see here that the clasp on the Planet Ocean is about the only thing on this guy that isn't freaking huge um, and is much smaller. And so what this means is that if you have relatively small wrists, it's going to wear maybe a little bit oddly. It's not a big deal for me. And I've got relatively small wrists. We're coming in like 6.75 uh, ounces, uh, inches or so. Um, but that is something you're going to want to keep in mind. Um, there is a fair bit of backlash, and I'm not sure if this is the proper term or not, but on the GMT hand, it's not always the case that the hand aligns exactly with what it is that you're, uh, with the hour hand. Um, this is something you can usually fix by sort of moving as you're setting the hour and minute back and forth making sure that you go forward then back up a little bit so the hour, the, the, the gears are in the proper position. But it's a little kind of thing. But it's a little kind of thing. Um, there is no half link. Getting into more substantial issues, this watch does not include a half link. It doesn't include a link that is half the size of the other links on here, like, for instance, this little half link is, um, which allows you to more precisely adjust the, uh, the, the, the fit on it. And the, a lot of people are saying, well, Nick, it's got quick adjust holes. Well, you don't need a half link. What's, the, what's your problem here? But the thing is, these adjustment holes, if a fine tuning, not for, for for gross tuning, not for making it fit. In a perfect world, the watch will fit beautifully with your with the the, the hole here, uh, with one of the middle ones being used. That way, if your wrist swells up a little bit, you can pop out to one, a bigger one. Or if your wrist shrinks down a little bit, you can pop to a smaller one. But whereas on this guy right now, the only way this fits reasonably well is at the very, very edge of that. So I basically don't have any further adjustment. So I really do think that all watches should include a half link, especially when they've got longer links like this, because these links are non-trivially long. Large. I mean, we'll pop this out here and take a quick measure here. Each one of these links is coming in at like 10 millimeters or so. And so that's kind of the granularity with which you can adjust this guy. And I really, really do think that they should make half links available either at, at the time of purchase, ideally, or failing that, they should at least make them available post hoc so you can pick one up from the maker and uh, make that happen. So um, th th that's definitely an important little thing that it's missing. And then finally, one thing I want to uh, kind of highlight here that is not really on Manta. They couldn't have done this any differently because it's on the movement itself. But one of the frustrating things about most GMT movements 
movements and mechanical watches is that watch this. So if I pull the uh, if I pull the crown all the way out, right now I'm adjusting the hour hand and the minute hand. Um, the second hand is stopped, and so in order to adjust my local hour, I've had to stop the second hand and move on to something else. Um, and, but with this, my GMT hand is moving as well. In order to adjust the GMT hand, then what I do is I go to the second position for the crown, and then I move the GMT forward, and I basically keep rotating it forward. And that's kind of, it's jumping independently of the date, independently of the hand. Um, it, it's just, it's on its own little thing. But the thing is, that is exactly precisely backwards of how you want a GMT functionality to work is think about it. Let's say that I've got my GMT set to home, because I'm a world traveler, but I always want to know what time it is where my wife is, so I can call her and, you know, say things to her, um, say things to her. That's very romantic. I, I do enjoy saying things to my wife. But anyways, that's beside the point. You want to know what time it is where she is. So ideally, you're going to get on the plane, and you're going to sit down, and you're going to figure out, okay, I'm going to Amsterdam, that's six hours ahead, so you pull this out, and then you adjust your local time six hours forward. But the problem is, in order to do this, this becomes a two-step process process with a movement like this because what you have to do is adjust your local time six hours forward and then you have to adjust the GMT hand independently of that and well your second hand is stopped and to, to match wherever the heck she is uh, or he I, I'm not judging but uh, anyways that, that's not a great thing the, the way that this generally should work is that you adjust the GMT hand the minute hand and the second hand and then you can change the local hour to match wherever you are that way you never have to reset the GMT unless you want to change this uh, both of the time zones that you're keeping track of there that's just not great um there are are only a very few watches that work that way with the independent hour hand. Um, the Grand Seiko GMT is one of them. The Rolex GMT is another one. But honestly, it's kind of annoying. And it really, to me at least, defeats kind of the purpose of having a GMT there. That's just not a beautiful thing. And so uh, that, 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 that to me bothers the crap out of me. It makes this a little bit less of a traveling watch than I think it otherwise could have been. It's fine. You get used to it. It's an extra 30 seconds of your life each time. But if you do a lot of time zone shifts, that's definitely a frustration. And so to me, all that's the bad. It's that the GMT hand is kind of backwards, that functionality. There's no half link on here, which makes the adjustability much less than it could have otherwise been. There's a fair bit of backlash in that GMT hand. The clasp is kind of wide, which is weird for wide, uh, smaller wrists. There are some areas is for improvement, but it's a budget kind of focused watch, although in the watch world at 1700 bucks is budget. Kind of insane, but it's the way it is. There's no anti-magnetism here, and the bent GMT hand bothers some people, but I, I get it. That's that. See, this is exactly why you need a bent GMT hand. So it goes over those indices. Um, there is unfortunately only one ugly issue here, and that is that there is no toolless quick adjust on this bracelet. Um, what I mean by that is that a lot of good modern watch bracelets have some kind of a functionality, like on this Breitling here, where if I press a little thing in here, it shortens the the buckle or, I'm sorry, it shortens the bracelet or lengthens it so I can pull it in or out, no freaking problem. Or similarly on the Omega here, and again, these are more expensive pieces, but still, you can press this little button and then slide the clasp in or out, and that allows you to adjust it to fit your wrist very easily. This guy has a regular quick adjust, which is a start, but it doesn't have the toolless one. What's frustrating and why this is ugly rather than bad is that they have toolless quick adjust on the Ocean King. Like there, they have some weird patent pending approach that it allows you to switch that in and out, and, and that's a beautiful thing. No watch in 2018 should ship on a bracelet without toolless quick adjust. Adjust. I'm sorry, I'm a zealot for that, but that's just because I've had it and I love it. Um, and so it bothers me a lot that they have they have that ability, but they didn't do it here for some reason. Um, because that should be everywhere, because it is really an order of magnitude more comfortable and makes wearing a watch on a bracelet just a much better experience. And so to me, that's what's ugly here, is there is no quick adjustment. Um, but final conclusions wise, honestly, this is a stellar watch. I love this watch. I loved wearing it because of the size. Honestly, I, I love my Planet Ocean, but this watch is too big and heavy. This is much more reasonable. This is much nicer on the wrist. I loved using it because of the legibility it's very easy to tell what time it is in any different time zone. I, I love it late at night because of that loom because, oh my God, the loom. Guys, it's still going over here. 
I loved traveling with it because the GMT complication's great. I loved staring at it because the finishing. And I would definitely love paying 1700 bucks for this, especially when the competition would be charging you two or three grand for something that's, you know, about the same in finishing. Mind you, it's not without faults. Mechanical is absolutely not the best choice for everybody. Mechanical watches have downsides. I have a whole video about that. Um, but keep that in mind. The GMT functionality is kind of backwards, but that's on the movement, not on the Manta. Um, the, the, the wide clasp isn't awesome for smaller wrists. They need to have have a half link and the quick adjust needs to just be universal across their alignment they need to adjust that quickly um but you know honestly that's that's on the whole i really like this watch a lot i had it on my wrist for about five days straight and honestly i would be just as happy to have it on there for another five days and if i didn't already have an ocean king on order prior to this i i would sure as heck have one on order now um seriously the triumph was great and it really put monta on my map but it still had a few vestiges of budget left, particularly with those painted-on indices and the numbers and such. This is really a huge step up from there. Monte is delivering great work. They're making watches that make Tudor and Longines seem really overpriced, which... Well, they are. Um, and making Omega and Rolex just seem absolutely absurd. I mean, seriously, this is a high-end luxury watch for under two grand. I have no problem saying that. And this is a watch put differently that you could feel no problem, like taking this guy off your wrist and handing it to a Rolex guy. I, I suspect that, you know, yeah, oh, the brand's wrong. But uh, uh, by and large, you will come up... Uh, this compares really, really favorably, and considering that you paid a third of the price for something compared to a Roly, um, uh, you're probably going to come out looking smarter in that whole affair. So, you know, although the lack of quick adjust and the half link make it a little bit tougher to say this than I think it needs to be... This is a gem. I, I just can't come at it any other way. I have no trouble recommending this watch. This is a great piece that I enjoyed wearing and absolutely cemented my desire to get an Ocean King. Um, it's a lot of money. Absolutely. 1700 bucks is a bunch of money to spend for a freaking wristwatch. Uh, but you know what? Honestly, unlike in most of the rest of the watch world, it feels like you're actually getting good value for your money rather than just shoveling it into some Swiss guy's chateau. So if you don't need the GMT hand, the Ocean King is a bit simpler with a better clasp and of course you can probably get a watch you're gonna like a lot even for less money especially if you go quartz but the thing is if you are the traveling type and you want something that is both budget friendly and really really high-end finished then there is no sky question in my mind that you're gonna love this guy uh -huh. Uh -huh. anyways hope this was interesting that you don't need that extra four meters and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day bye now